Hey friends and happy Valentine's Day. It has been a couple years since I did my original Dollar Tree Valentine's video and like a sign I was walking in the Dollar Tree and I have not seen any frozen seafood in any of my local Dollar Trees in probably a year and like a sign to make another Valentine's video they had frozen salmon and I've always wanted to do the, use this in a Dollar Tree video so I'm, I'm excited. Let's do it. Here are the ingredients I got. My original like initial plan as soon as I saw the salmon was to do like a creamy cheesy fire roasted tomato sauce to go with these gnocchi and I swear the Dollar Tree has had fire roasted tomatoes near me forever and of course now they don't. That's how it goes but that's okay. You know we pivot we we work with what we can find. That's one of the reasons why I do these Dollar Tree videos after all is to see what we can do with a non-traditional variety of ingredients. So you can see I got gnocchi. I did not buy a new bag of flour because flour is such a repeat ingredient when I do these videos that it just doesn't make sense to buy a new bag of flour every time I do one. This was the best option they had in stock for cooking oil. It's a soybean olive oil blend. It's like 95% soybean oil, 5% olive oil. You notice the jar, the bottle that it's in is like this like nice olive color. It makes it look like it's a real nice olive oil. But if you kind of like turn it upside down, you can see that it's actually the bottle itself that's green. I bet when I pour this out, it's going to be a pale yellow at best, but that's okay because it's going to work for what we need it for. I also got a quart of whole milk. This is a shelf stable milk. Doesn't need to be refrigerated till you open it. It's really great. I've used it before. I would even venture to say that if you consume dairy, this is one of the best grocery products that the Dollar Tree carries, like period. I got a container of breadcrumbs, of which I will probably only use a few tablespoons, but that's okay because I always need more breadcrumbs. This little container of Parmesan cheese, and let me show you real quick the two options that they had at the Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree carries grated Parmesan cheese and a larger container of grated topping with Parmesan. If you look at the ingredients, the smaller container is basically just Parmesan cheese and an anti-caking ingredient, while the larger container is whey, starch, rice flour, casein, flavoring, palm oil, lactic acid, buttermilk powder, and then finally a bit of Parmesan cheese. So I always recommend the little container. And then I got this little wedge of jalapeno cheese. It's always really hit or miss whether Dollar Tree near me has any kind of cheese in stock. Today it was mostly a miss. It feels kind of criminal spending $1.25 on this little two ounces of cheese, but it is what it is. I've seen in some Facebook groups where this was considered a holiday item that they were getting rid of and had, you know, marked the price down, but unfortunately not for me. The Noki seems like it's a pretty good product. I've been wanting to try it for a long time. I've made my own Noki out of, I mean, Dollar General ingredients, but the same concept. Um, I'm excited to try these pre-made ones. And then finally, on to the salmon. So the salmon is obviously frozen, and it is a four-ounce portion of, I guess it's Kita salmon. It's also known as chum salmon, and I know some people get really kind of weirded out over the idea of eating seafood from the dollar store, especially salmon. They feel like it doesn't feel realistic that it could be the price that it is. Just keep in mind that it's a four-ounce portion. It's frozen, which reduces the, you know, transportation and storage costs for the manufacturers as opposed to fresh salmon. It looks to me like the portion probably is coming more towards the end of the fish, towards the, sail the tail side, which I'm guessing is a lower quality cut. And $1.25 for four ounces, that's like $5 for a pound of frozen salmon. That doesn't seem that outrageous, especially because uh, the Kita or Chum salmon is generally considered a lower value fish in North American markets. And you can see what these look like. I mean, they're just little vacuum packed, tiny portions of salmon. These are still pretty frozen. I've had them in the fridge just for, I think like a couple of hours. So I'm gonna get these in some cold water to finish thawing. And by the way, I think Kita is just like a way to market chum salmon that sounds a little more appetizing, I guess. So random tangent, when I was a teenager, I really wanted to go to Alaska. That was like my like ultimate dream goal. Actually, there was specifically a outdoor program. It was like a 20 something day sea kayaking trip, I think. Um, it was from a, it was like an outdoor leadership program and a bunch of sea kayaking, but the program was like 
over two grand and that just it wasn't gonna happen like two grand plus the flight out there was never gonna happen but I was determined I was gonna make it to Alaska in some way before I went away to college and so I couldn't afford a fancy outdoor leadership fun sea kayaking program but I could afford to do a summer of unpaid labor and so I ended up working at this super remote wilderness family run summer camp and it was a really neat experience. There were a lot of really fun times. It was also hard to be away for the summer, especially in such a remote place where I wasn't able to just call family and friends. It was a, you know, very slow process of mailing them. I think I got to call them with a calling card like a couple times on the satellite phone the entire summer, something like that. <laughs> but anyway, that was where I learned my salmon types and it's a, a, a neat little trick to it. And you just, uh, you, so it's for the uh, Pacific salmon. I think it's uh, six types of salmon in North America. And obviously there's the Atlantic sal salmon and then the five Pacific ones. And so you have your, your pinky finger is for pink salmon. Your ring finger is silver. Your middle finger is king. Your index is a uh, sock eye, like you're going to sock someone in the eye. And then chum for your thumb. <laughs> random bits of knowledge that I know that never really comes up in any useful scenario. <laughs> I don't expect that salmon will take very long to thaw since it's in fairly small portions. So I'm getting my sauce started and just adding a couple tablespoons of oil and flour. I'm cooking and stirring this for just a couple minutes to cook the flour. Butter would have been my first choice for fat in this, and then my second choice would be like lard, like bacon grease or sausage grease or something. Get this in before this starts burning. You don't want your flour to burn. You want to cook it, but you don't want to burn it. So as I stir this, uh, that flour and oil mixture will will fully mix into the milk and so it's not going to be like this gross chunky weirdness it's gonna uh, become smooth and thicken this i might grab a, a whisk out in a second i switched my uh whisk and that's doing the trick for getting the flour mixture blended in i do want to add a little more milk though but you can see how it's thickening up and momentarily I'll start adding some cheese. As this smooths and thickens, it starts to look like a really delicious appetizing sauce, but don't be fooled. It is super bland right now because all the flavor is from the milk. We didn't have butter, so we don't get the, the flavor of a nice toasty butter roux, but that's okay. That's where our cheese is gonna come in and some seasoning is gonna come in. I said originally I really wanted to do some fire roasted tomatoes in it, but well, that's okay. We'll do some pepper, some red pepper flakes. I just already know I'm gonna need at least a little more milk because that cheese is gonna thicken it up even more when it melts in. And I would always rather have too much sauce than not enough. It definitely will need some salt, but I want to wait until I get my cheese in. And then I think salting it is probably going to be like the last thing I do. I tell you, this cheese definitely shreds nice. So for $1.25, that was a pricey little two ounces of cheese, but it's really good. It's like a really strong and extra creamy pepper jack. It was very, very good. And then I want to get a nice bit of Parmesan in there. Now we're starting to get an idea of the flavor and where it's going to go. I'm going to add a little bit of salt right now. I can always add more. And a little bit of onion powder. So a lot of you have noticed that when it comes to spices, I don't season things the same way every time I cook them and I kind of just go for like what sounds good to me at any given time. 
which sometimes has its downsides because someone will ask me to cook something just like I did before or ask how I cook something and I'm like, uh, that's a great question. Oh yeah, that is, I'm going to have to start focusing on starting the other dishes in a moment here because I need something to distract myself from just sitting here and eating this. I do want just a little bit more Parmesan, not just, not because I necessarily think like it needs it. I just kind of want a little more of that, that cheesiness. And I've got this on super low. I may need to add a little splash of milk, but otherwise I think this is, this is done and ready to go. I've got some oil heating up in one of my cast irons and I got my salmon out and have dried it and it, I mean the texture, you know, you can tell that it's been frozen for a while. I believe chum tends to be a little bit milder than other salmon types. I'm just going to do some salt on both sides and some pepper. This is the same oil that I uh, used in the sauce. And hopefully this cooks up nicely. Like I said, you can tell the texture has been a little bit affected uh, from being frozen, but I'm hopeful. I've also got the water boiling back there for the gnocchi and I'm going to drop those in as well. And these should just take a minute or two to cook. I love, love, love a good crispy salmon skin and moving your salmon too early will just rip it apart. So usually I'm really good at cooking salmon. Uh, let's hope that I don't choke on camera like the Eagles did yesterday in the Super Bowl. Womp womp. The gnocchi's done, so I will drain that. And then you see I've dumped my gnocchi into the cheese sauce, giving it a good stir. I'm real happy with that cheese to, cheese to gnocchi ratio there, that sauce to gnocchi, ra gnocchi ratio. And then I have my breadcrumbs, which I'm just going to pop the pan here with some of that. And then pop it right into the oven for a little bit because my oven has decided that it wants to cooperate right now. So let's take advantage of it. I peeked under and my skin is starting to get nice and crispy. And I don't think there's actually very much longer that these would need to cook. But I am going to pop those in the oven as well for a few minutes to finish. So my salmon here only spent three minutes in the oven. I poured it out and immediately got it off the hot pan. And visually to me, it looks a little bit overcooked. But I took a piece off the end here, kind of on the smaller end where it would be the most overcooked. And it does not taste even a little bit overcooked. It's not dry. It's very moist and I have no complaints. I also pulled that pan of hot cheesy gnocchi out of the oven. Decided to plate this up. Of course I gotta get a bite of this before I actually start plating it. I try not to burn my mouth. Mm, wow that is really really good. I really went back and forth on whether I wanted a veggie like a green veggie of some kind. And I didn't end up doing that. I kind of wish I would have. I'm not really worried about the volume of food. I'm just so used to putting some type of veggie on my plate, having something green or whatnot. It's Valentine's Day. You know, it's okay to skip your uh, skip your veggies for just a meal. And we've also got a uh, dessert coming up. So there is definitely that too. I think asparagus would have been the way to go with this dish. I'm just gonna set that salmon right on top. Yeah, I think visually something green on the plate would have been really nice. But in terms of what is on the plate and the flavors, like I have no complaints whatsoever. I'm so excited to grab Andrew so we can eat this. All right, Andrew, we have here a cast iron seared salmon with a cheesy gnocchi. I'm gonna try the cheesy gnocchi first. It, it's good. I'm just gonna like let you know now. Oh, thanks for thanks for warning me of what I already know. Mmm. <laughs> I really right? like I really like that salmon. Yeah. 
Right? That's not bad. I was I was uh, worried I overcooked it, but it definitely doesn't it's look... Still, no, it's still juicy. As I say, it doesn't seem overcooked at all. No. And not bad for a dollar twenty five hunk of frozen salmon. No, gone. not at all. It's very, very good. I think I like this better than the shrimp alfredo Valentine's dinner. I agree. I did a couple of years ago. Like, it was good. Yeah, it was good. But... It was good, but the, like the fish, the fish by itself is already really good. But this like the breaded cheesy gnocchi just has like much more depth. And I really just think in the last couple of years, I've just gotten so much better at making sauces. All right, well, we're going to go finish this and I'll come back to y'all in just a bit for dessert. I knew I wasn't going to have a whole lot of time to make any kind of like really elaborate dessert tonight. So these are the three items I got to throw together a quick dessert. Quick, but hopefully really delicious. So I got Dollar Tree's, their cheapy vanilla bean ice cream. It's a little under a pint. I don't expect a ton out of it flavor wise. We'll see. We'll see how it is. And then I've been wanting to try this for a while. It's the this Philadelphia water ice. I've been seeing it for a while and I love me some water ice. So what I'm doing is going to be really simple here. See, let me give this a little taste real quick. Huh. That is not bad. So the ice cream is not bad and it's a lot creamier than I expected it to be. But I'm still going to do what I had in my head. And I kept Googling to see if I could like find an answer and I really like couldn't on whether adding uh, some Cool Whip into some, you know, like cheapy budget ice cream would make it creamier. So I was in New Jersey, I want to say earlier this month, but I guess it's been like a full month now. And of course it's winter. So the little ice cream stands that I really want to go to that I, you know, I've been going to since I was a kid are all closed right now. I haven't found any place in North Carolina that makes custard the way they do where I grew, uh, grew up. And I really, really wanted some. I did find a place at the Berlin auction for those who that are from Jersey and might be familiar with that place that was selling custard. And it was like the saddest, greeniest custard ever like it, it wasn't smooth and creamy at all you could see the like weird graininess it had I don't know what was up with it but anyway so I was not able to satisfy my craving for custard at all now what I really wanted and what I would have gotten if the ice cream stand near my grandmom's house was open is a gelati now most people go oh a gelato no a gelati. Basically, it is a dessert that is layers of a custard ice cream and water ice. And it is just really good. And I have been craving one like crazy. So I'm gonna do my best here to make my own. This, this is looking actually really nice. Well, this is all fully mixed. I'm trying to decide if I should pop it back in the freezer for just a little bit here just a few minutes well, at least it fits right back in the uh in the pint <laughs> i think that's what i'm gonna do i think i'm gonna put it back in the freezer for like five or ten minutes and then assemble my dessert <laughs> i actually left this in the freezer for like an hour but you can see it's nice and creamy Maybe the water ice I should have left out for just a little bit. Unfortunately, it's getting late and I'm getting impatient. <laughs> so I'm just going to hack it just till I get some. At least the ice cream part is easy to get out. I'm not going to make these super full because, like I said, it's getting late. Yeah, this is just a little before bed dessert. <laughs> Sugar. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure this is going to be a pale comparison of the dessert that I've been craving, but it is something, right? Definitely not the same, but still really good. Still gives off, you know, similar vibes. Have a try and tell me what you think, Andrew. Reminds me of like putting Cool Whip on top of Jello when I was younger. <laughs> like, in a, like, I don't know, you get one of those solo jello cups and you put some cool whip on top of it 
Hmm. I used to do that. I don't know. It's a very distinct flavor. Probably because I would, it would usually be the cherry jello. Yeah, I think the cherry definitely is a very overpowering kind of nostalgia flavor. Mm -hmm. When I get a gelati, I like to get the, the orange. They have like an orange creamsicle water ice mm -hmm. and the vanilla custard. It's so good. All right. Well, we're going to go finish our desserts and do some dishes and get ready for bed. But once again, happy Valentine's Day. I'll see y'all next time.